Hello, everybody, and welcome to the premiere episode of the Game with Fame podcast. I'm your host, Eric Erickson. Today, we have a special guest on the show. He is someone that I have known probably since I was about eight or nine years old. And I brought him on today because he has a great story about um, the role gaming has played in his life. Uh, welcome to the Game with Fame podcast, Blake Collins. Hey, thank you, Eric. Thanks for having me on. So as I said, Blake, uh, gaming has played a pretty significant role in your life um, over the past uh, six months or so. And there's a story behind that. Why don't you just go ahead and tell people kind of uh, what happened to you in your life uh, in September? Oh, man. Well, uh, September 21st was a hell of a day. I, uh, I won't describe it. So I was... It was great. It was a vacation. Um, it was day one of a vacation with one of my best friends. I was going to Utah for a festival, what's called a boogie, where skydivers meet up from all around the country. And we basically have a weekend of um, just jumping all weekend in the sun. So I decided to get a little warm up jump on the Wednesday in Denver with my best friend Justin Fuller and the jump didn't go so well kind of uh hit the ground a little hard and broke a lot of bones and if it wasn't uh if it wasn't for that then I don't think I ever would have gotten into gaming the way I did that's for sure because when you're in a wheelchair for a little while you uh you have to you have to definitely pass time and video games was a whole new level of that for me that's for sure and as far as the injuries you sustained, uh, what exactly happened to you? Oh, man. So it's funny because every time somebody asks me about the accident, the first thing they ask me is, uh, so your parachute didn't open. And it's like, well, come on, guy. If my parachute didn't open, you and I wouldn't be sitting here talking about this. You're jumping from 14,000 feet. Like, there'd be a whole different situation that's, that's happening there. Uh, but... I uh, I just took my final approach a little bit too hot, and uh, when I hit the ground, I I don't know I it, I have amnesia about the entire thing, but I absolutely snapped my femur, snapped my pelvis, which doctors make a weird face when they or a weird expression when they kind of open a book with their hands, and they say that's what it's called when you snap your pelvis is you have an open booked pelvis, wow. which is kind of a, a, a not a pleasant sight. Um, snapped those two, tore my MCL, my meniscus, and I gave myself a, a, a pretty significant brain injury called a, a diffused axonal injury, where when you hit your head really hard, the axons, which are kind of the, uh, the means in which electricity passes through your brain or the pulses pass between your brains, those are sheared off. So my, the MRI I saw when I woke up just had black spots all throughout my brain. Um, so I was pretty damaged, pretty, pretty damaged. Um, but lucky to be alive. That's what pretty much everybody told me is that I shouldn't have been alive. So it's been, uh, it's been good that I've been able, to, been able to handle it. And as far as I know, you were in a coma and how long were you in that for? Oh, 12 days, I think, something like that. So the entire thing was significantly worse for my family and friends. And I realized that when I got on Facebook and saw all the posts, because, I mean, I slept through the worst part. I mean, I, I don't know. I woke up 12 days later after a, uh, I had a little bit of pneumonia that caused me to die at one point. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's called Code Blue. Learn something new. Um. But the medical staff at uh, St. Anthony's in Colorado resuscitated me, brought me back, and um, I've been able to been able to recover pretty pretty well, surprisingly. And as as far as when you left the hospital, what were the doctors telling you about like your recovery and your recovery time? Well, when I left the first, I mean, I went to three hospitals. Oh, okay, so. The first hospital was when in a helicopter, 
so that was the first time I'd ever rode in a helicopter. So that was apparently interesting. I don't know. Um, the, the prognosis wasn't strong then. The second hospital was, they stabilized me, said, you're alive. Um, when I was in a coma, they said I was either going to, I was either going to wake up brain dead, um, just vegetable, or I was going to wake up pretty normal. Um, wow. With a diffused axonal injury, there's not a lot of great prognosis on the backside of that. And um, somehow I was fortunate enough to wake up exactly as I, as I hit the ground. Um, and so I, after all the testing, I've been able to prove that I can still keep up a little bit. That's, that's incredible. And you said, so there's three hospitals, you said? So that was the second hospital. What was the final oh, yeah. stop for you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why you're the professional. Um, I went to Craig hospital. Craig is a specifically a spinal cord and brain injury facility in Colorado, South of Denver. And it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, it is the best brain injury and spinal cord injury facility in the entire country. Um, extreme sports, uh, any extreme sport athlete or Olympian or anybody with those type of injuries, that's the best place you can possibly go. They are uh, just a collection of the most experienced and most qualified individuals in their field in the entire country. And I, you know what, if I was going to hit the ground anywhere, that's the place to hit the ground because I got really lucky. If I would have had that accident in Moab, Utah, which is where I was headed, things might have ended up a little differently because who knows where I would have ended up in Utah. But that Craig Hospital was absolutely phenomenal. Um, it gave you it gave me a whole new level of respect for uh, hospital staff in general, nurses. Um, I have several anecdotes of newfound respect for the nurses in that field and um, that – really allow you to maintain a level of positivity that shouldn't be capable of in those type circumstances. That's unbelievable. And so, so you're in Colorado through your, you know, going to different hospitals. When were you finally able to make it back home to Washington? Um, September 22nd was my accident. October 26th. In this case, was so, my, okay. That's when I was able to be discharged. So, so you're back at home in Washington in October, and then you had a group of friends who all gave you a present. They all chipped in to build you a computer to give you something yep. to do, obviously, because you were in a you're in a wheelchair, correct? Yeah, completely in a wheelchair with a snap pelvis. You're not allowed to put more than uh, any body weight on a pelvis. Uh, when it's healing it's titanium reinforced but the middle part needs time to grow back together so my friends um i don't deserve these type of greatness from these guys um they i'd been once i moved in with ryan i called him ryan because we're on a podcast but let's be honest we all call him kessler uh i had been had a little experience with gaming and when they saw that I was going to be in a wheelchair and there was going to be four months of me just being stuck in a wheelchair in my mom's house in Muckleteo, if you're from the area, that's a boring life. It really is. And so five, four or five of them all band together, threw in money. And um, Nate and Kessler, they built me a PC and opened up my mind to what it's like to be a PC gamer. And I'll be honest, I'd never given it a chance. I'd played console a little bit growing up, but um, never, never even dreamed that I would be owning a PC, let alone spending hours on Twitch and just being lost in the community that is the gaming community. And like when they when they told you that this is what they were going to do, like what was your reaction? Were you like, well, I like you said, I don't play video games that much. Like, what were you thinking when they told you this was uh, this was going to be happening? Instantly thrilled, absolutely instantly thrilled because I'd been trying to wrap my head around being immobile 
and what am I going to do? Like, there's only so much network bin- Netflix binging that you could possibly do. Let's be honest. Like, we've all spent enough hours as it is on there. And the idea of uh, only being able to do that just was nauseating to me. And with all the other things I had going on, um, I needed a positive. I needed a win. And these guys came through with me and gave me a win. And I knew that I was going to be interested in the idea of it because I messed around on Kessler's computer a little bit when him and I first moved in with each other. But um, when they told me that that's what they were going to do, I was just head over heels for it. I couldn't I couldn't even wrap my head around it, really. So they, they build you that PC and, and you get it all set up and everything. What was like? What was the first first kind of games you jumped into? What were your, your early experiences like playing on PC? Oh man, Doctor Disrespect was the <laughs> first was the first guy I started watching. Oh man, I loved how he just was an animal, violent speed and momentum, baby. The yeah. the Slick Daddy Club. I was all about it. Um, I was watching him on a tablet whenever I needed to have work done and I couldn't be in front of my PC. Um, him, uh, Chaco Taco was a huge fan of my, or he was not a huge fan of mine. <laughs> I was a huge fan. <laughs> Whoa there. I was a huge fan of Chaco Taco, just so laid back. And it was funny listening to the, like watching the two different streamers because they have two completely different styles. Yeah. Way opposite. Doc is violent speed momentum and Chaco is just calm, cool, relaxed and doesn't yell, doesn't swear used to have hair down to his, you know, lower back. Like he's just, just a completely different personality. And then both of them, all they did was play PUBG player unknown battleground. And, uh, that's the game that got me first. This, this battle Royale gold rush that we've got going on here in the gaming world. Um, that was the one that hooked me and what I was playing earlier this morning, actually, uh, on my day off because, I mean, now it's been seven, eight months, and I still, I still, if I have any free time that I'm not with my girlfriend, I am in front of my computer playing either Battle Roy- or uh, PUBG or Realm Royale, has been the newest one. Yeah, Doctor Disrespect is like one of the first streamers that I watched on Twitch and kind of got me hooked. And I'll watch people on Twitch. So, shout out to the Doc. Shout out to the Doc. I, you know what? I'd rather give a. I'm shouting out Chaco. You can shout out the doc. I'm shouting out Chaco. He's newer to the scene, and there's something about just a, a good guy. Doc's a good guy, but there's something about Chaco that I love that I would – he's my, he's my favorite, I think. If I had to pick one guy, he's my favorite. And I'm very new to PC gaming as well. I've just you – know, me building my computer has been a new thing, and as I'm sure you know, playing games with a mouse and a parts? keyboard. Some of them, yeah. So yeah, shout, shout out so. to you. So, oh man, uh, that's funny. So you you know that playing with the keyboard and mouse is pretty difficult at first, a little hard, and playing with the controller. So, what were your early struggles like uh, learning how to game on a PC? Just straight panic, <laughs> just utter panic when it comes to like button button mashing. With the whole A W S D, that was a whole new movement for me. I'd only ever used a controller. Um, it's just utter panic. My girlfriend for Christmas got me a game board, which is a nice little addition because it gives you a joystick that you can run with your thumb and you can completely customize all the buttons. Uh, that would be Kessler that also originally started using that and I just kind of followed suit. So that's a nice, a game board is a nice um, transition for a console gamer. It gives them something, it gives them a little comfortability around it. And the mouse is so much better than a right joystick. You can be so much quicker, more accurate. Um, the mouse was the easy part. Moving is the hard part. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. On some games, I still use a controller even when I'm playing on PC. So, But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You're working on it. What do you, when do you play Fortnite, what do you use? When I play Fortnite, I use a controller because I played Fortnite on console for many hours before I got built my PC. So it's what I'm most used to. So that game, I, I'm gonna use. I use a controller, and I don't know if I'm ever gonna switch. But all other games, I use keyboard and mouse. So I'm working on it with those games. I am trash at Fortnite. Absolute trash. I've tried. I can't build to save my life. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty tough because that's yeah that's where a lot of the game is uh, won or lost. 
Yeah, if you can if you can figure that out, you're gold. But I cannot. I keep trying. I, I have a friend that the it's amazing how this um, how large this gaming community is, because I have friends that I play with regularly from England oh, wow. and from Canada and from the east side of this country. Like uh, my friend from Canada, his name is not Canada. Excuse me, he's from Manchester. His name is Luke. I play with him extremely regularly because all my friends work nights or work either days or really late nights. And by running a restaurant, I am pretty much only in the morning. Can I get to play? And so I play with people in England because that's when they're up and gaming, you know, at the end of their days. And, uh, it's, it's been a fun, it's been just a fun ride, just meeting new people, learning new things. And, um, it's something that I never, a year ago, a year ago today, I was into skydiving. I loved it. That's all I did with my free time. I golfed and skydived. And speaking of two opposite different perspectives or something. And I never would have guessed that a year from last July, I would have been sitting here playing video games on a PC. And like you said, like you played a little bit of console like growing up, I think a, a lot of people our age they played some type of video games as oh, a youth. Halo. But but then you said you you know you weren't playing any video games before your accident. Uh, as far as like your your view on video games, what you thought on video games was it like something you looked at in a positive light, a negative light, maybe a neutral light? Kind of how were you? What was your like thoughts on video games in general? It was just something I never associated myself with. I mean. Kessler, Nate, they're some of my best friends and they've always been gamers and I've just never gone down that road. I uh, I guess maybe maybe negatively <laughs> negatively but never something that I was able only because I think it was just different than me. Um and so I never gave it a chance, I think. Is the biggest thing is you you kind of put gaming in a in a box and if you don't go into it with an open mind of wanting to to embrace a new experience or embrace a whole different culture you're gonna think of it as the the living at home with your parents in your 40s and and just sitting in a basement on a pc but it's so much more than that and that's something that you really can't comprehend until you just dive right into it. And one of the games you were diving right into, as you said earlier, was uh, PUBG Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and that is a game that falls in the battle royale genre. And that was not something that's been around when you played video games before. So, you know, what were your experiences like playing a battle royale and kind of getting to learn what that all that is about? Oh man, there. <clears throat> I was about to say there's not a whole lot of things that compare as far as uh, intensity or adrenaline. Skydiving and being in the top three situation in PUBG <laughs> are just are – just, your heart is just racing. Like you're sh- sitting there shaking the entire time just hoping that you don't potato when some guy steps in front of you. Like it's just – I said utter panic when you're hammering the keyboard because that's what it feels like when it's top three, the circles closing in, you know, somebody's crawling through a bush, just being a jerk. And you're just trying to just trying to finish that, that push to getting my first solo win is so addicting. It's an adrenaline rush. Like unlike anything like, yeah, skydiving is an adrenaline rush, no doubt, but it's different. There's something like it shouldn't make your heart race the way it does. It really shouldn't. You're sitting in a comfortable office chair, you know, in slippers and sweats playing a video game, but your heart is just racing. You're sweating. If you wear too much clothes, you're sweating because it's so intense. And, uh, you know, that's something my girlfriend laughs at me about. She always said she would never date a gamer. Uh, She never. And when I met her, I didn't game. And, uh, and then after my accident, I had an excuse. And now that I'm back to being healthy, she's starting to realize that she's dating a gamer 
and it's a uh, it's an eye-opening experience for her as well has she been pretty receptive to it like uh, now that you now she that you're fully embracing it <laughs> yeah she, she cracks a lot of jokes um apparently when i'm asleep i move my hands like i do on a keyboard like my my left hand just sits there and like I'd like to say like it looks like it's playing a piano, but no, we all know it's just hammering a keyboard in my dreams. Um, so she's gotten, she's been able to laugh at me about that. Um, whenever she texts me, she's asked me if I'm gonna go to, and she just sends a picture of a beer, and as in like pub, are you gonna go <laughs> pub? And it's like, well, at least, at least that's what it means. Like I'm going to play video games, <laughs> you know, like. Could be you know worse things you're doing, right? Yeah, exactly. T just bring up my Twitch and you will actually see what I'm doing. Sparky210 <laughs> is watching Dr. Disrespect. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Like, at least there's uh, some accountability when it comes to gamers and relationships. I don't, and I want to so. dive more into the Battle Royale, but I just want to say if you guys are watching in the chat, I like to call you guys the paparazzi. If you're hanging out in the paparazzi and you have questions for Blake, just go ahead and post them in there and I'll try to get to as many of them as possible. But more into the battle route, you know, you're saying it's a huge drown rush and I can totally agree with you on that. I know I've been in, you know, different games, whether it's PUBG or Fortnite or whatever else. And I'm in like the top two or three and I either win or lose. And I kind of, I come back to reality and then all of a sudden I realize like how fast my heart is beating and like how much I'm sweating. And it's, it's like, it's unlike any like video game experience that I've ever had with any kind of game. And it's, you know, it's been something, it's, it's very much very fun to enjoy. And it's, you know, it's become the craze in gaming. You can really see why. Yeah. Like we, start, like when we got into video games, it was either, if you did first person shooter, it was Call of Duty or Halo. And the only time that got truly intense was if you each have the same amount of kills going into like the last five seconds of a round, but the rounds are only 10 minutes long, eight minutes long in, in PUBG or Fortnite, it's like a 30 minute round. If you're making it to the very end and you're constantly watching all your, all, all your, you're watching your back, you're watching all the angles and you're just waiting, waiting, waiting. And then when it gets to be 30 minutes later, and you just die because somebody was hiding in a bush and you didn't see it happening. I have jumped out of my chair and like knocked over water bottles, knocked over things because you're just, you've invested time in like this adrenaline rush and there's not, absolutely nothing like it. All right, Blake, we got a question from the paparazzi. Oh, you already answered. Yo, Blake, did, have you gotten your first solo win yet? And I'm assuming that's in PUBG. So tell us oh, about your first solo win. <laughs> That's absolutely from Nate because Nate has been on me since the very beginning. He was the first person that I started playing with, and I was his 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 potato. It was Kessler and him and then me, and I was just a noob for the longest time, and I'm still there. But yes, I did get my first my first solo win. Nothing really dramatic. Um, my first ever one, which is a point of controversy. Because <laughs> Nate says it doesn't count because it was on EU servers, which, mm. okay, it doesn't actually count. <laughs> but at the time, I didn't know that. I just wanted to talk to different people. So I was just switching. I was, at one point, I was in the South American servers because I didn't know any better. I just wanted to listen to different people <laughs> in the while we played. And uh, the first one I ever got was I went in a drop and I got an AWM and – just pop four heads to end the game. And that was one of the biggest adrenaline rushes I ever had. Felt great. Texted all my friends. What's up, guys? Got my first one. 20 minutes later, Nate and I start talking, and I just mentioned that I was in the EU servers for fun, and he just, nope, doesn't count. It's nope. Not going to recognize just, it. Oh, he texted the group chat as the the official – the, the uh, the official of the group saying, nope, that does not get the seal of approval. That was not a true solo win. He has been relegated because we have different classes in our group, uh, our group uh, Twitch chat. And I got relegated from down, down to, I believe it was not so little bitch. I believe is what I got relegated to for losing my solo win. 
I, I can I totally know what it's like texting the group when you first went because I did the same thing. Mine was on a, on Xbox Fortnite because at the time I didn't have a PC and I think I had three kills in the game. And so my friends gave me crap about that because I killed two people at the beginning and then didn't kill anyone until the very last person. But it was my first win, so it was definitely memorable. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all about how the job gets finished, Erickson. It's all about how the job gets yeah, finished. Yeah, you're going for the end result. Yeah. We don't need to see numbers. We don't need to talk about stats. Come on, I'm not that selfish. I just got a dub. Um, and I've since gotten them solo. I think I've gotten one or two other solos, but then I started pretty much only playing duos with Luke in Manchester, and him and I at one point won three games in, in like three hours. So things have changed. But now uh, now I've moved away from PUBG a little bit, and I've been playing a lot more of Realm Royale because there's something kind of childish about it that's fun. And, you know, both of us have mentioned that all the friends that we've been playing these kind of these battle royale games with. And I think you would agree that it would agree that a battle royale is way more fun when you're playing duos or squads with all your friends. It's kind of what do you enjoy kind of about the uh, immersive experience that battle royale games allow you to have with uh, different people? Well, it there's like this weird, like highs and lows as far as intensity in the game. And you'll you'll experience it when you watch streamers as well, where you'll be it's nice that you can just have casual conversation because there's slow parts in the game. So you can like just have friends and you can just shoot the shit and and make fun of each other and say, Hey, why are you auto running into a wall because you're looking at your phone? Like what are you doing? And yet within in an instance, you can be ambushed by another team and and all hell can break loose all, out of nowhere. And there's something unpredictable about it that is just a whole different experience. And being able to do it with friends, you start learning how how you refer to different things, like um, different buildings are different. Like how are there's different names for different buildings, whether it's a a fuckboy shack or a shit shack, or and those are two two completely different like uh, structures in PUBG. So you know where somebody could be hiding or, you know, two story or, um, uh, what else are some of the other things like the back six of Pachinki? We know exactly where we're landing or the back six of George pool. We know exactly where we're landing duplexes and George pool. There's different things that we describe it that we know it, it, you develop like a, a communication or a, like just a language amongst your friends that is, uh, you just you don't find it like yeah call of duty and those games you there are there is strategy but there's less because you just die and you just reload boom right again but if it, if you die in PUBG, and if you're the one teammate that dies in PUBG, which was me regularly then i have to just sit and watch them play for another 20 minutes when they make it to the final the top 10 which is ridiculously frustrating but you know what things happen and as far as, uh, you know, you talk a lot about Battle Royale games, but I'm sure there's other kind of games that you play. What are some of the other games you've taken to since you've uh, started gaming on PC? Um, I just got into uh, Warframe right now, which is something I've been playing. Kessler just got me on that a couple days ago. Uh, it's You have like a heightened sense of mobility of a, as your character, and it's a little bit... It's extremely sci-fi-ish, and you're, like, trying to conquer space in, like, an interesting way. I'm not sure. It's it's really fun. You get a bow and arrow to start, so it's really fun to, like, since you have a heightened sense of movement, to just fly around and bounce off walls and try and hit crazy bow and arrow shots to the face, because why the hell not? And so it's a – that's a different game that I've been playing, but for me, there's a lot less intensity in that because you tend to just – just finish a mission it's all about leveling up your character so the missions are just extremely attainable so there's a little bit less of a gratification around it for me than i think i've noticed in the bet in the past or i've been playing a little bit of uh i play a little far cry 5 as well um far cry is an open world game where you get to you know try and fight off the the clan <clears throat> that's taken over montana so the graphics are extremely stimulating and you get excuse me you get a dog uh, that's on your side so it reminds me of my pup harper which 
little shout out to my dog Harper. She's the best dog around. Just throwing that out there. And so it's nice to be able to have a little companionship in a video game as well. And so I've been playing a little Far Cry, um, and a little Rainbow Six Rainbow Six Siege with Nate and Kessler. But that's hard because it's very uh, map knowledge orientated. And if you don't know the maps, you look like a dumbass, which is not something I enjoy. But I'm learning. And is like as far as games you played in the past, like before you started PC gaming, did you have like a favorite game that you played growing up at all, or favorite games? I mean, Halo Two and Black Ops Two, or Advanced or Call of Duty Black Ops Two or Halo Two, I think will go down as the game I have most hours in, hands down. I don't think I'll ever catch, no matter how much PUBG I play, I will never catch Halo Two or Black Ops Two. Um, just countless thousands of hours um but that was probably up through middle school and then after that i just never uh late middle school into high school i just stopped playing games pretty much completely um fifa i did have a period of time in in community college where fifa was all i played um me and zlatan ibrahimovic got down (laughs) for psg and sweden we got down um but that that's just a different type of fun. That's that's just hanging out with the buddies when you're intoxicated. That's a different type of gaming. And you mentioned Call of Duty. I'm sure you know Call of Duty, the new Black Ops. Black Ops 4 is bringing in Battle Royale. Are you? Is there a lot of excitement and anticipation to play the Battle Royale on Call of Duty? Thrilled. Absolutely. I'm going to buy it. That's... The first time I've probably ever been guaranteed going to buy a game, actually Far Cry 5, I was also pretty stuck on, but I will absolutely buy Call of Duty Black Ops 4 for the BR. It's supposed to be massive, immersive, and a whole new level that I've never been a part of before, so I'm looking forward to that. I just want to wrap things up here. A couple more questions. Uh... If you were to run into someone who's kind of on the fence, maybe about becoming, starting to play video games or really diving fully into it, well, what would you say to that person? First of all, I would say listen to Game of Fame podcast because... Great, uh, great advice. You know what? That's what I'm here for, man. Just a nice casual plug for you. Um, and just go into it with an open mind. It's you just because you've never done it before doesn't mean you shouldn't give it a try. And uh, I'm, I've always said do anything once try anything once that's why i got into skydiving and it you know what i would still go back i love skydiving to this day even though it almost killed me i still love skydiving and if i can say that about skydiving then anybody should give pc gaming a try because it is it's go into it with an open mind you're gonna fall in love with the community that's around it and uh, you're really gonna be exposed to new things all right, Blake, for completing your interview today, you've earned your star on the Walk of Fame. So congratulations yes. to you. On I'm your s- last question here, what do you what would you like your star on the Walk of Fame to say? Um Man. I think it's gonna have to say Sparky two one zero. I think we're just gonna go with the the Twitch name and the nickname i've had since you and i have known each other sparky 21 goes back to when i was eight years old so i think uh there's not a lot better of a representation of my change between eight years old to 25 skydiving be damned i got this i I, I think that's a pretty good fit as well all right blake thank you for coming on the podcast the very first podcast of the game of, of game with fame i think everybody enjoyed listening thanks everyone for tuning in again blank can't thank you enough hey man i really enjoyed my time and uh feel free to ask me any more questions if you ever need to